It's no secret Americans are not getting enough sleep. The Centers for Disease Control recommend at least seven to eight hours of sleep every night for adults. But according to the National Health Interview Survey, nearly 30 percent of Americans reported an average of fewer than six hours of sleep per day. And now a new study finds sleep deprivation can affect different parts of your brain, exposing the way our body clocks work. The findings were published in the journal Science. CBS News medical contributor Dr. Tara Narula is here with more on the study. All right, so Tara, I feel like I'm an expert on this. I can <laughs> Me speak too. personal. Yes, we all are, right? <laughs> yes. um, this is interesting, though, because scientists looked at brain scans from participants who did not get enough sleep, and they found something that we haven't necessarily heard a lot about when it comes to this area of sleep deprivation. What did they find? Right, so they looked at 33 healthy volunteers in their 20s, men and women, and they subjected them to 42 hours of wakefulness. 42 hours? Yes. <laughs> Okay, all right. <laughs> Brings me back to my on-call days in residency. And during that time, they did functional MRIs of their brains. And they basically looked at different areas of the brains and how they reacted to the lack of sleep in terms of processing, attention, and memory, and other different tasks that they were asked to do. And so what is it that they were able to discern? Because it's no surprise that the participants who were sleep deprived performed worse in some of the tests. Which parts of the brain were sort of more adversely affected? Right. So first of all, they found that performance did decline with sleep deprivation, as we all know, and that different tasks reacted differently to the lack of sleep. So for instance, memory, uh, your ability to recall, was a little bit better preserved than reaction time on simple tasks. Mm -hmm. And they found that there are two forces that affect our sleep. One is the the circadian rhythm, that internal clock that tells us it's daytime, it's nighttime. The other is sleep pressure or sleep debt. That's the feeling that I need to sleep now because I've been awake for 12 or 20 hours. And those two forces differentially affect different parts of the brain. So for instance, the thalamus, which is one of the deeper structures in the brain, which serves as a relay center, was more affected by the circadian rhythm. The frontal part of the brain was more affected by the uh, lack of sleep or the sleep debt. Whereas the thalamus or the deeper structures of the brain were more affected by the circadian rhythm. Other parts of the brain, it appeared to be, were affected by both the sleep debt and the circadian rhythm. So I guess the question then is, uh, Tara, what is the significance of this study and how can the results actually help patients who might be suffering from various kind of sleep disorders? So this is just the dawn or the beginning of our understanding of sleep neurobiology and the sleep-wake cycle. And really what this does is tell us that by using MRIs by doing this type of testing that hopefully we can in the future better understand how lack of sleep affects shift workers, how jet lag, uh, how it affects jet lag, how it affects people with neurodegenerative and psychiatric disorders, which we know wax and wane with different times of the day, and potentially opens the door to developing tests for chronic sleep deprivation, which I probably would score a hundred on. <laughs> uh, and so, you know, really this tells us that we have a lot to, a far way to go in terms of understanding uh, but that this is the way that we're going to be able to unravel these secrets is by really analyzing the functional process of the brain, and how it's affected by sleep. Bottom line is though, for the average person, you need to get enough sleep. The National Sleep Foundation recommends that if you're under 65, you should get seven to nine hours of sleep. If you're over 65, seven to eight hours. All right, good advice, Dr. Tara Narula. Thank, Thank you, you so much.